The first way to make your videos more cinematic is to make the background blurry, no matter what camera you're using. Not for every shot, but it's very often the right call. You want a blurry background or bokeh, 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 to make your subject stand out. A blurry background separates your subject from the background and just looks way more cinematic. And by cinematic, I mean like the movies. <laughs> like a Hollywood movie? You may notice that right now I'm not looking too cinematic, even though I'm in a kind of pretty location. The background's in focus, I'm pegged up against this tree, and I'm in focus. Plus, I'm not framed very well, am I? To make the background blurry, there are several things we can do. Number one, we can get the subject closer to the camera, and that's pretty easy to do. I just walk closer to the camera. I can get the subject farther from the background, and I want you to pay attention to the background as we do all of these things. So let's get farther from the background. I look a little better like this, but there is more we can do. We can adjust the f-stop or the aperture. The aperture is the opening that lets the light in. A big aperture makes only a little bit in focus, like just my face, and a small aperture like this makes everything in focus. And right now we have a small aperture. You'll see apertures ranging from, you know, usually about 2.0 to 16 or 22. And those smaller numbers mean a bigger aperture, more light's getting in, less is in focus. A smaller aperture, less light's getting in, way more is in focus, like what you see now. So I'm going to live adjust my aperture so that the lens goes from this to this, letting in more light and making less in focus. So I'm just gonna manually do this and I'm gonna go from, where am I now? F18, I'm gonna go all the way down to 2.8. This lens goes down to 2.8 and notice how much better this looks with the background all blurry and out of focus. One other thing we do to make the background more blurry is to choose the right lens or the right focal length. Right now I'm at 16 millimeters, a pretty wide lens, so more is in focus than would be if, with this very lens, we zoomed in to say 35 millimeters. And now, notice that even less is in focus. The background is more blurry. It's so more blur, zoom in more, or put on a lens that's more zoomy or more telephoto. I'm gonna mention one other thing that I don't want you to worry about too much because all of these things you can do to a degree with even a smartphone. But smartphones have very tiny sensors. That's the thing that picks up the light. And tiny sensors tend to have more stuff in focus. If you have a higher end camera with a bigger sensor, you can control the depth of field to focus more. But don't worry about that too much right now. One more thing, a lot of phones, including the iPhone, have a cinematic mode that makes a fake blurry background but your results may vary. You can try it, but you may or may not like it. I've filmed a bunch of stuff in my front yard that we're going to edit together in my next video. You can download all of these cinematic shots in the link below. It also includes some voiceover. I suggest you stop and do that now. Here's one of the shots we'll be using. This is a shot of me turning around. You'll notice that I stand out pretty well, even though I'm not super big in the frame, but the background's out of focus, the foreground's out of focus, and I'm in focus. Focus is a great way to make your subject stand out and your videos look more cinematic. Number two is composition. What's in the frame, what's not in the frame, and where is it placed? There's a lot that goes into composition, but one of the first things you should learn is the rule of thirds. Now your video screen is divided up into two lines going this way and two lines going this way, making a little tic-tac-toe grid. And you can turn that grid on on most phones and most cameras. Even on your iPhone, you can have that grid on and it looks kind of like this. Yeah, do you, do you see the grid on there? And if you don't, Trust me, there's a grid. It's just tic-tac-toe looking. What you want to do is place your primary subject, your main subject, on the intersection of these lines. So I'm looking at the grid on mine. There's like two dots right there and two dots right there where the lines intersect. That's where you want to put your subject. Or you actually want to put it on the top line or the bottom line or one of these two side lines. That way the subject stands out. In fact, it's been scientifically proven that our eyes are drawn to the intersection of these lines on the screen. So you wanna take advantage of that. If you start paying attention when watching movies, you'll notice that the main subject is almost always on one of these intersections of these lines or on one of the lines themselves. The center of the frame is often reserved for an authority figure, like a powerful character in the movie, or something like here where I am the teacher. I'm teaching you, so in this situation, I'd be considered the authority. But generally, you'll see characters in movies on either this line, with their face probably right at the intersection of those two lines, or this line, 
right at the intersection for their face as well. But it's not always right here at the top. Sometimes you can have a dog down there, a house, mountain, it could be anything, it could be in any of the intersections of these lines. So I suggest you turn the grid lines on your camera or on your phone and try to make sure that your subject is somewhere on one of these lines. The other thing to note is that sunsets and sunrises and landscapes are almost always divided in thirds, not in halves. Boring to have the sunset right here where you got oh, the sun up here and the beach down here. You want to have the sun up here and the beach down here or vice versa. This shot of me driving the truck works because I'm on one third of the screen like this. And notice that I left more room in front of me than behind me. That's something else you really want to be aware of. It should be two thirds in front, one third behind. Even if I'm just tilted this way a little bit, notice that it would be pretty unnatural for me to be like, like this talking to you. That, that, that doesn't work. Tip number three, you want to use foreground. Even right now, I've got a little bit of foreground right here and it makes it just look more cinematic, more like the movies. And this shot of the truck driving into the driveway, notice that I've got some brush just in front of the camera and then the truck and then the background. And that creates like layers of separation. It creates depth. So you've got foreground, the truck, the subject, and the background. And we also are messing with that depth of field thing. I've got the aperture set to 2.8 wide open for this lens. And that creates even more depth because it's more blurry in the foreground and more blurry in the background. The truck just pops out. So that's something that can really enhance your videos. Number four is angles. Most people, they see something cool they want to take video of, or they're making a video for their YouTube channel and they'll go, oh, here's something cool. And they break out their phone and they're like, Look, it's pretty. They just, they just hold it at eye level. And eye level is yet yeah, often appropriate, but if that's all you ever do, it's super boring. What you want to do is change up the angle. If you have the camera up high, like, let me just do this live. It's more fun if I just do it live, right? If you have the camera up like high, like, like this, it makes a person look small and weak. Everything you do is adding to the story. Every way you frame it, how you light it is adding to the story. So if you want them to look small and weak, you put them down here, like this shot of me when I'm walking into the forest and I'm scared. And if you want to make your character look powerful, what do you do? You put the camera down really low and I look down at you, my peons, obey me. That's, that's what works. You also want to change the height of the shot. Don't always just go like this or that if you want to, you know, if you, oh, I'm getting a high angle, I'm getting a low angle. No, you want to actually get to get on the ground. If you're shooting a mushroom, you know, get on the ground and shoot the mushroom like this. And it's going to be much, much more beautiful and engaging. If you're shooting a child, get the camera down to the child's level. Don't just do this. We all just go like this. Like, don't just, if you're shooting a child, get down here at their face level and follow them. It's just going to look so much better if you consider the angle of your camera and the height of your camera. That one small tweak can totally level up your videos. Notice this shot of me getting out of the truck. My boot steps on the ground. The camera is on the ground with the boot to create a lot more emphasis. Number five, another way to direct your viewer to the dominant subject, in this case me, even though I'm far away, is with leading lines. This tree trunk is creating a line, a path to me. It's going to draw your eye to me, even though I'm, you know, just a little dot in this frame. Leading lines can be anything with a line that leads to the subject. It can be a road or a path or a hiking trail or a staircase or a table that somebody's sitting at the end of or a bench. Look for leading lines and position your subjects where the lines are leading to them so that the viewer's eyes are naturally drawn to the subject. This shot of the truck coming up the gravel path is a simple example of leading lines. The lines on both sides of the truck lead right towards the truck, so there's no question what the dominant subject is or where the subject is going. Number six is to change the distance to the subject or the focal length. You'll notice that most people, when they just break out the camera, they're about the same distance from everything, same angle. We already talked about angles, but you want to constantly change that to keep it interesting. You see that constantly in movies. In fact, in our video that we're creating, we're starting the wide establishing shot with a drone. Then we're going to a medium shot of the forest being revealed from behind a tree and then getting close to the ground with an interesting shot on the ground. We can change the distance by getting the camera closer to the subject. Just walk closer or walk farther away. We change the focal length by either zooming out 
or zooming in if we have a zoom lens on our camera or by swapping out the lens for one that's maybe a wider lens or that's more zoomy, more telephoto. Here's a bonus tip. It's often really cool to frame your shot like I'm framed right here. I've got a tree here, a tree here. I'm framed in the middle and that makes it very pleasing to the eye. Number seven is motion. You wanna mix your static shots, shots where the camera's on a tripod just like this, with shots with the camera moving. And when you're filming yourself, it's like, well, how do I, how do I film myself? I need, I need a, a filmer, I need a camera person. Well, no, you don't. You just gotta be a little bit creative. You can do shots like this, where I'm holding the camera on a big old tripod, kind of far from me, but you can't really tell in this walking shot from the little sequence we're gonna create. And this shot also of my feet, where I've got the camera upside down and I'm just walking, filming my feet. So it creates more interest. You can also create static shots by filming a little bit farther away and then editing with your software, zoom in, and then you can pan left and right and, and up and down, and that's another way to create kind of fake motion. Number eight is slow motion. Just about any camera or phone has the ability to film in slow motion. It adjusts the frame rate. That's how many frames the camera or phone shoots per second. Usually you'll be filming in 30 frames a second. So if you set it to 60 frames a second, it's going to be one half speed slow motion. Or if you set it to 120 frames a second, it's gonna be 4X slow motion. So if you want to emphasize a point in your video, set your camera to slow motion and film in slow motion at 60 maybe or 120 frames a second. Some of the shots we're gonna use in our sequence, I filmed in slow motion. In addition to adding emphasis to a shot or giving it a more dreamy, ethereal feel, it's kinda of cool when you're doing scenic shots where you're moving a little bit and you can't hold still and you don't have a gimbal. If you slow it down, it'll be a lot smoother. And yes, you can slow it down in post with your editing software, but if you didn't film it in slow motion, when you slow it down with your software, it's not gonna look nearly as good. Number nine, lighting. Lighting is magic, lighting is everything, and that would be, you know, entire multi-year course to kind of get sort of good at it. Lighting sets the mood and can tell you volumes about a scene. We don't have time to cover lighting in any detail, I'm just gonna give you a couple tips to make your lighting just a little bit better. Number one, if you're filming yourself, like I'm doing right here, and you're outdoors, one thing I often do is I'll open up the camera on my phone, I'll set it to selfie mode like this, and then I'll just hold it in front of my face here and I'll spin around like this until the lighting looks best on my eyes. And right now, the lighting's really low and it looks kind of terrible pretty much everywhere because it's so dark. I hear there's these circles under my eyes. But usually you can find a spot where the lighting looks best, where you don't have these shadows in your eyes and it's even and not harsh. So I would do that. Another tip is to go just inside the shade. If it's sunny outside, go just inside the shade. So the roof of my head here and the sun's kind of over there and light's bouncing around, but it's not hitting me directly. And that can often create really even smooth lighting. And you might want to just get back a little farther, like just under some kind of a patio or eave or tree cover. You just get just inside the shade with the light out there and it'll bounce right in. Right now, I probably shouldn't be shooting or I should add a little light just because it, it doesn't look great right now. Another tip is the best, most beautiful lighting for you going for like epic, gorgeous shots, right near sunset, right near sunrise. Overhead light in the middle of the day, don't do that. My final lighting tip for you is that you think that you want the light like right in front of you, blasting you in the face, but very often you want the light behind you. It can be much more beautiful, much more cinematic behind you, behind your subject. Here's a shot I got today. The lighting wasn't great, so it's not beautiful, but having the light behind the trees makes it look much more cinematic. If it was bright sun, the light rays would have come through. It looked a lot cooler, but still this looks kind of cool as opposed to just, you know, shots of the trees like that where the light's just shining on them. So remember, try to get the light behind your subjects and maybe off to the side a little bit and just play with it. And even if you move your camera, you can get those little, those little light flares and stuff. And that looks, that can look super cinematic. Number 10 is super important and I'm gonna show that with you in a minute. But before I wanna give you your assignment, I want you to download all of the elements that I've included for a kind of little scary, silly sequence. It's got VO and a bunch of cinematic shots that we have shot today. And I want you to edit something together. It should be pretty easy because the voiceover is kind of direct what's happening. You can see kind of what 
order things are occurring in. Download all of the elements, which I'm authorizing you to use for whatever you want, edit them together, and then you'll be ready to see what I do with these elements in the next video coming up. So make sure you hit subscribe and tap the bell so when the editing cinematic video is ready, you're there to watch it. Also, I want you to notice something about this shot. Which of the things we talked about am I implementing in this shot? Well, I'll give you a clue. Well, I'm framed, see these two trees? I'm framed by both those trees. I've got some foreground right here. Also, I'm using the rule of thirds. Note that my eyes are right here at this top tic-tac-toe line. You want to understand all of these tips, all of these ways to make videos more cinematic so that you can, anytime you're creating a shot, think about them and go, oh, how can I make this more cinematic? Also, the background's blurry, foreground's blurry. So I've implemented, you know, at least four or five of these tips in just this shot here, just a talking head shot. For those of you who made it this far in this video, and I think it's probably a little longer than I wanted it to be, here's the secret. I didn't edit this video that you are watching. For years, I have looked trying to find an editor that I could consistently rely on that could edit as well as me. Remember, I edited in Hollywood for 18 years. I'm extremely picky, but I found editing machine and these guys have pulled it off. They've got not just one, but a team of editors as needed that are as good as me. All I do is I take this footage, I submit it to them with some notes, and a couple days later, they submit a cut back to me, and I have changes very often because I'm so picky, and they've got a very easy way for me to like make notes and change things, and bam, it comes back. And sometimes the first round, sometimes the second round, it's totally perfect. So if you are looking for an editor, you're at that point in your video, your YouTube career where you need some help, like I do now, I, I love editing. I just don't have time to do it with all I have on my plate, busting out at least two of these videos a week, plus everything else happening in my life. So if you're looking for an editor, I highly recommend you check out Editing Machine. They are linked in the description below. They are really, really good. Tip number 10 is to break the rules. Like, you know, maybe have the camera cockeyed to create tension. This is called a Dutch angle, by the way. So if some scaries happen and something is intense and they're running from the bad guys, you have the, the angle cockeyed. And it's like, what's, what's making me feel uneven here? Or if you have somebody that's lost in the woods, instead of having leading lines going to them, having like sticks and branches and lines and paths going everywhere. So it creates that sense of confusion. Or you could just run up to the camera just to go, 